wishes for your other birthday. Because I didn't know that was a thing. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise God. Y'all know how I am on Fridays. We made it, y'all. We in the land of the living. We on top of the grass instead of underneath it. Praise God. We made it through a full week. Glory to God. Glory to God. Man, praise your God. Praise him because you made it. You made it through a full week. You didn't get a bad report. If you did, you still made it. You in the land of the living. You got an opportunity to fix it. Right? Yes. Glory to God. I love Fridays. Y'all know how I am on Fridays. <laughs> Y'all know how I am on Fridays. I just get excited about Fridays. Praise God. Glory to God. Um, so, I love when God gives me a word and then he confirms it. So, I was dreaming last night and God gave me this word. Um, and then, as I was listening to the pastor, he confirmed what he said to me. So, yesterday we were talking about um, expectations, right? And I just want to clear it up because I don't want people to think that I'm talking about that you should have expectations of people. Because that's not true. You should not have expectations of people. The only um, place that you should place your expectations is with God. Because he's the only one that can keep his promises to you. People, they um, they don't keep their promises. They they break promises. They, they, they're they not consistent. They change with the weather. Like, that's just people. Um, so, my word for the day is nobody owes you nothing. Right? I want you to get that in your spirit. That nobody owes you nothing. Nobody. I don't mean that like you think well, maybe my parents do because they birthed me. They don't owe you nothing. They don't owe you anything. The only um, situation in this life, the only situation that um, is consistent is God. That's the only expectation you need to have is because man is going to fail you every time. I hear so many people talk about where my parents didn't give me this. My, my, um, my father was not there. My mother didn't do this. They not, they didn't have to. They get to choose if they want to be parents. You know, they don't have to. They don't owe you anything. The same is true with your friends. The same is true with your husband, your wife. They don't owe you anything. They don't have to do what they want. They have a choice. Everybody has a choice. And I need you to get that in your spirit that nobody owes you anything. Like they get to choose. Your, the price has already been paid for. That's the reason of Jesus. The price has already been paid for. They don't owe you anything. And I think that's very important to keep in mind because that's where the offense comes from. That's where people um, feel hurt or, um, or they feel like people did them wrong because you expected them to do something. You expect them to respect you. You expected them to um, not turn their back on you. You expected them to be honest um, with you. You expected them not to lie to you. Those are expect your expectations. That may not have been theirs. They don't owe you anything. Right? One of the things that I had to learn, I learned that um, when I told you guys about the story. Um, good morning, Walter. I'm sorry. Um... Yes, this is the day that the Lord has made. Um, so today, I mean, one of the stories I told you about um, the relationship with me and my mom. And um, she she and I hadn't spoken for 15 years while I was in Atlanta. Um, and that's because I felt like she wasn't the mom that I needed her to be. So because of those 15 years um, of holding on to that anger, I missed out on a lot. I missed out on her... Um, getting saved and becoming a pastor I missed out on being a part of her wedding seeing my mom walk down the aisle I missed out on um, the, the struggles that she was going through with my brother like I missed out I missed out on a lot of the situations in my family like my little cousin I never saw him grow up he's now a man now when I left he was a child um, and I missed out on so much because I let that offense um, uh, dictate how I move and operate it right I, I disconnected myself um, from a family that God has set me in um, right so <clears throat> I went I said all I have to say this is when I decided to um, come back and, and mend the relationship with my mom um, I think I told you guys this story before but when I decided to mend that relationship with my mom I 
had all these words in my mind like when i see my mom i'm gonna let her have it you know what i mean i'm cussing her out i'm gonna I'm a give her a piece of my mind i'm grown i'm grown now she can't this is what i'm thinking i'm like i'm grown now she can't say nothing to me like she gonna hear what i gotta say she gonna hear what type of mother she's been to me she gonna hear how angry i am i can't wait to give her a piece of my mind right this is how i was like um, this was in my mind. Like, this is how I'm going to talk to my mom when I see her. Like, I, I'm grown. It ain't nothing. She, I dare put her hands on me now. I'm grown. Like, this is my chest out. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm fueled by this anger that I've carried in me for 15 years, right? So, when I seen my mom, none of that came out. None of that anger came out. Instantly, I heard God say, like at that moment where I'm getting ready to say what I got to say, I'm walking. I remember walking down the stairs, seeing her in her car, um, getting ready to come and open the door. And I'm like, "Ooh, this is what I'm going to say. As soon as my hand hits that door, I heard God say she did the best she could with what she knew. And when I got in that car with my mom, I just cried. I just cried. I said, Mom, I just want to love on you. I just want to hug you. I just want to kiss you. I miss you. I couldn't even let none of that out. God was like, you better not dare. <laughs> you better not dare. You better not dare let that out. And her, me hearing God say that placed me in a place of freedom. It freed her from the offense that she, she done to me. It freed me from being offended. And I started to realize was like, she did what she could. She could have left, right? She could have just gave me up. She could have, um, she loved me the best that she could. She did what she thought was best, right? And that's all you can expect of anybody. That's the only thing that you can expect from anybody is that they will give you the best that they can, right? That they will, um, and, if, and if they don't, so what, right? Don't. The, the problem is when you get offended. Don't take their issues on as yours, right? It's, it's again, um, this thing is bigger than you. I want you to always keep telling yourself that. Every time you get up in the morning, every time you get up to go to work, tell yourself it's bigger than me. You know, I got this job because it's bigger than me. God placed me here on purpose. It's bigger than me. I want you to um, keep telling yourself is that, um, the, the thing for today, I mean, yesterday is have an expectation for God. You know, don't, in a time where things are unexpected, have an expectation for God. And I want you to think again to say to yourself today is that um, nobody owes me anything. Right? Nobody owes me anything. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm not holding anybody accountable to owe me anything right what they do is what they do we have to really learn is that people are going to be people right people be people and as my pastor would say people are going to be people they are going to offend you you get to choose if you're going to be offended you get to choose how you take that on you get to choose if you're going to hold grudges if you're going to tell people that you know what you didn't do what i needed you to do so this is a cutoff this is done but think about, have you always been the daughter that you were supposed to be? Have you always been the, the husband or the wife that you were supposed to be? Have you always been the friend that you were supposed to be? It's common, um, and most of us think of self-preservation. Most of us think of ourselves first. If you, if you say, well, you know, I don't, then you a lie. Because there, there is times where you just think of yourself first. You mm -hmm. own, and most of us do it, even as a parent. You have moments where you think of yourself first, regardless if you be like, you know what, I always do this for my child, I always think of your child. No, some of that is for yourself. Some of that is about you. It's just human nature to be selfish. That's just, it's just human nature. But it's the level of selfishness that you're going to take in. It's, it's not a problem for you to be selfish. You are supposed to, you are supposed to love yourself. But are you gonna let that selfishness get in the way of your relationships with other people? Bye you gone, baby. Have a great day. I love you. Love you too. I have you love you. Love you. <laughs> Jonas, we are going to <laughs> Um But anyway, so oh your dad says good morning. Good morning. 
Um, so today what we're talking about is nobody owes you anything. I know some people are like, you know what? Yes, they do. <laughs> you know, my husband do. He took a vow. He don't owe you that. He don't owe you that. He 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 did take a covenant. But again, we men, we're men first. We're human first. And there's going to be some things that we're going to fail at. And we have to give people the room to make that failure. We have to give we have to give people the space to have failures, right? And we have to not have. To me, what I learned, I had a friend that always told me this. He would always say to me, Tara, stop expecting people to do this. Stop expecting people. And I would argue him down. Like, what you mean? What you mean? That they, they, um, I shouldn't expect them to do something. They should. Like, and he, he would tell me this all the time and I would get so angry. But last night I heard God tell me, nobody owes you anything. I already paid the price for them. When, when my son died, he didn't just die for you, he died for them too. That, that person that hurt you, I died for them too. That person that offended you, I died for them too. That person that um, may have done you dirty, I died for them too. That person that has, uh, that parent that wasn't good for you, I died for them too. That person that molested you, I'm sorry, you may not want to hear, but it's true. I died for them too. That person that raped you, I'm sorry, you may not want to hear that, but I died for them too. Nobody owes you anything. And I'm just keeping it real. And I'm not speaking from a place that I don't know nothing about. I've been molested, I've been raped. And I had to realize I had to let that go. I had to let it go. They didn't owe me anything. They didn't owe me anything. Now I get to choose on how I'm going to let what they did to me determine how I move in my life. Am I going to continue to make bad relationships? Am I going to continue to choose um, men based on my past? Am I going to continue to get into relationships that um, I'm afraid to really be a part of because of what happened to me? That person now has power over me. He's now determining and dictating how I move and operate in my, in my adult life. And this stuff happened as a child. God said, nobody owes you anything. Nobody, and I walked in my life really believing that everybody that I come into a relationship with owed me something because I wanted them to love me how I love them, but they don't have to. I wanted them to give back to me what I gave to them. I wanted them to feed into me like I fed into them. And then I had to realize like, hey, were you always feeding into them? Were you always a good friend? Were you always, you know, um, checking up on them you always complain about they don't check up on you were you always checking up on them have you been the friend that you're requesting and I'm sure many of us can say no there's been moments that I if you're truly honest I know I have um good morning Nicole that's one of my beautiful friends my sister um I I had to send her a message one day it was like you know what I've been a horrible friend <laughs> I've been a horrible sister how are you doing <laughs> I need to check in on you Right? And that was God working on me, telling me like, hey, you can't expect something from somebody that you're not giving. You fall short sometimes. So give them the space to fall short too. Nobody owes you nothing. That's what we're talking about on Faithful Friday. Nobody owes you anything. Right? Nobody. So I want you, even if you're... um. Like my sister, that she's going and she's about to get married. I want her to understand that her husband doesn't owe her anything. He does it because he loves her, but he doesn't owe it to you. God already paid the price for him. He paid the price for you. And your expectations should be in God. If you, if when you're getting married, put your expectations on God. The reason why um, we go to church and we allow the pastor to um, pray for us and, and marry us is because we need God as the foundation. And our expectations should be in God and not in our husband and not in our wife. But our expectations should be God because guess what? Our husband and our wife is going to fail every time. If you don't have God as the foundation. 
So that's my gift to you, sister. <laughs> uh, me praying for y'all marriage because I really do want to see you um, get married. I really want to see you enjoy your life. Um, and I'm happy for you. But um, so today, I just today the word is nobody owes you anything. And I need you to really get that in your spirit. Um, really get that in your spirit that you don't walk around expecting people to do for you. You don't walk around expecting people to be somebody that you're not to them either. Right? You know, even like I said, the one thing I had was as a, as a parent, you know, um, I, I was so angry about the relationship that me and my mom had. I had to really check myself. Like, was you really a good daughter to her? Did you, did, was you standing by her? Was you giving her what you're asking? And I just said, you know what? I, at that time, I felt like she the parent. Why do I have to do this? She the parent. And I heard God say, you the daughter. <laughs> so what? What that mean? What, what does that mean? Labels. Why, why are you trying to label it? It's not about labels. All of us is God's um, kids. He don't have any stepchildren. He don't have any grandchildren. All of us are his kids. That's the only label he sees. Is that we're his kids. So the same grace that you want God to give you, the same grace that he placed upon you, he, he, he's going to place it upon your enemy. The person that you don't think should deserve that grace, he, yep, he put that grace on them too. <laughs> I would, yep. And the one thing I do want people to understand is one of the things that I see a lot of people do is whenever you point something out, their first argument is, did you look at yourself? Did you point the finger back at you? That's the first argument they have. This is how you know a person is taking offense. This is how you know that they really haven't heard anything that you said. This is how you know that they're not gonna grow beyond what you said. Because they're too focused on your part instead of what part they played, right? And a lot of times when I'm telling people something, it's not because I want to just point fingers. Please believe the stuff that I'm telling you this is stuff that I'm trying to put, implement in my own life. I'm not just pointing fingers. I'm saying, you know what? Hey, I need to work on this too. This is why I'm telling it to you. This is why I'm sharing it with you because I feel like I'm not the only one. I just want to share it with you so you can get a better understanding just like I'm trying to get a better understanding of what it means to take this walk, what it means. Some things I'm going to have to get rid of. Some things I'm going to have to grow from. Some things I'm going to have to face head on in order for me to take this walk and be pleasing to God. Because that's really the only person that I want to please. Anybody else, I don't owe you anything. <laughs> I don't. I don't. And I don't want you to hold me to a standard that you don't hold yourself to. Um, Walter says, I wish more people understood this powerful word from the Lord. Yes, I wish they would, Walter. I really wish they would. This is the only reason why I'm sharing it with you. Again, I don't want you to think I'm pointing fingers. Or I'm saying that I'm better than you. That's, that's nowhere near where any of these um, lives come from. As I always explain to you is that this is me sharing my growth with you. This is what I'm learning along the way. This is what I'm learning that I need to start applying. Um, or that I've already learned. Because this was a lesson I learned, you know, um, 11 years ago. When I started, when I came back here. You know, I learned to let it go. To not hold people to standards that I don't hold myself to. To not expect anything from people. And that's that's going to be a lesson that you're going to learn throughout your life. Because I'm still learning. Because I still have heartbreak. Because I expected people to be a certain way where I should not have. Have no expectations of people. Don't put them in a box. Don't say what they won't do. What they will do. Give it to God. Give it to God. Let him work that out. You just move and operate according to your own healing. According to what God is working in you about. And everything else, as long as you're walking with God, he'll work the rest out. And if that person um, that you're dealing with and God is not working it out of them, guess what? He loves you so much, he'll remove them from you. To keep you from... Um, experiencing heartbreak and, and hurt because God wants you whole. 
He wants you healed and whole. He wants you healed and whole for whoever you in a relationship. Because remember, we talked about um, how whoever you're connected to, you bleed out on. Do you want to bleed out pain or do you want to bleed out joy? What 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 is it that you want to bleed out into your relationship? What is it that you want to bleed out into your children? What is it that you want to bleed out into um, your, your job? Your, your business, what is it that you want to bleed out into that? Do you want to bleed out success, happiness, joy? You know, the blood of Jesus, is that the blood that you want to bleed out or do you want to bleed out the blood of the enemy? At, at, at any point, you're at some point, you're going to bleed out and you get to choose on what type of blood you choose to bleed out onto people, right? So today, what we talked about is um, nobody owes you anything. I just really, I keep saying that because I really want you to get that in your spirit because that's going to help you move through life much easier. It's going to help you not be offended by what people do, right? Once you take away the offense, you can truly learn to love people right where they are. You know, that's where Jesus, that's where Jesus loves us, that he loves us right where we are. Once you take away that offense, once you take away the fact that nobody's perfect, once you take away the fact that everybody's going to make a mistake, that even you yourself, your righteous self, <laughs> your holy self, even you is going to make a mistake. I know I went on somebody's podcast the other day and they were saying, um, they had came onto my live and they heard me talking about my past and they were like, um, I thought you were holier than now. I said, I never gave you that perception. That was your expectation of me. Don't place that on me because I'm not perfect. I'm not. I, I make some mistakes. I'm still going to make some mistakes. You know, it's just, it's human. And, and if God says that I'm going to make mistakes, no matter what position he puts me in, whether I'm a leader or a follower, I'm going to make mistakes. Don't you put that on me. Don't you put that weight on my shoulders. That was your expectation of me. I'm not perfect, right? I'm not confessing to be holier than now. I'm not confessing to be righteous. I'm not. I'm confessing that I am righteous with God, but by myself, I'm a mess. I'm ratchet. I'm a dirty rag. I'm just going to keep it real with you. I'm not. I'm going to make some mistakes. And so are you. The difference is I recognize my mistakes. I recognize that I need to work on them. I recognize that in order for me to improve, in order for me to grow, I have to do it with God. I can't do it by myself. I tried it. I tried it. You see where it got me. I tried it. It didn't work. I can't do it. Um... God wants his children to be happy in every area of his life. Yes, Walter. That's exactly what God wants. He said, my thoughts towards you is good. If his thoughts towards us is good, then that means he wants um, us to be good. And he said, an expected end. You hear that? God has expectations of you. So if he has expe expectations of you, you should have expectations of him, not of man. They get to choose. God gave them free will. And he gave you free will. The same way he gave them free will, he gave you free will. You get to choose what direction you want to go. You get to choose how you treat people. You get to choose how you allow that emotion to affect you. You get to choose how you move and operate. You get to choose what life you want. Regardless of what happened to you, you get to choose how you'll let that affect you. So let me go ahead and pray for you. So our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil forever and ever. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Father, we give you honor this morning, Lord God. We give you um, all the all the power, Lord God, comes through you, Lord God. We, we can't do this without you, Lord God. First of all, we just want to ask you to forgive us of our sins, Father God. Allow us to lay 
head at your feet, Father God. Never again bring it to your attention or mine, Father God. Lord God, we thank you for placing forgiveness in the hearts that we may have sinned against, Father God. Lord God, whoever we may have offended, whoever our words have um, caused people to have strife against us, Father God, place forgiveness in their hearts. Soften their hearts towards us, Father God. Even our enemies, Lord God, help them see who we are, that we make mistakes, Lord God, and that it was you that cleaned us up. It was you that turned us around, and we're, we're not who we used to be, Lord God, but we are who we want to be in you, God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I thank you for purposing us, Lord God. I thank you for having a plan for us, Father God. I thank you for helping us to recognize that nobody owes us anything, that Jesus already paid the price for us, Lord God. I thank you for your son right now, God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for sacrificing your only son so that all of us can be saved, not one person. You didn't You didn't leave out one person. You didn't leave out one nation. You didn't leave out a certain group of people, Lord God. You said all the world, Father God. You included everybody, Father, when you sacrificed your son and we just want to tell you thank you this morning lord god i thank you for covering the people that are hearing the sound of my voice lord god i thank you for touching them in every area of their lives lord god i thank you for removing the offense from their heart father god cleaning their heart up lord if it's anything that's not in there that's in there that is not of you remove it father you said that you judge the heart father god lord god search their heart father if there's anything that doesn't belong remove it right now father speak against anything that was spoken into their lives lord god in the name of Jesus, Father God, I think I thank you this morning. I thank you for opening their ears to hear you and their hearts to receive you, Lord, because this word was for somebody. This word was for somebody to know that nobody owes them nothing, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that they can be free from that offense. They can be free from that anger. They can be free from that emotion, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, and they can free the person that they are offended by. They can free them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you this morning. I glorify you. I honor you because without you, we can't do it, Lord God. You woke up with us up this morning. We didn't do that on our own, Lord God. You woke us up in our right mind. We didn't do that on our own, Lord God. You gave us use of all our limbs, Father God. We didn't do that on our own, Father God. Because you spoke into our lives, because you said a word this morning, we come to be, Lord. And we just want to tell you thank you. We want to tell you thank you. We adore you. We glorify you, Lord God. On this faithful Friday, Lord, teach us how to be faithful in this walk. Teach us how to love, not just our way, but your way, Father. Teach us how to love how you love unconditionally, Lord God. Teach us how to not allow the offense to dictate how we love on people. Teach us how to bleed out on people the, the goodness of you, Father God, the promises that you have so that we can have an expectation of ourselves, not of other people, but of ourselves. Thank you, God. Father, you said the word is a two-edged sword, Lord God. So anything that you speak through us is also for your, ourselves, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Father, we ask those present blessings. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. So guess what, guys? I love y'all. It's nothing you can do about it. God loves you more. So just accept it and move on. I want to tell you guys, I appreciate you so much for taking time out your week to tune in with me. You guys have been consistent with... Um, listening to me consistent with liking and sharing so please like and share continue to like and share oh my god i love that you guys are being consistent with that um it's just it's it's phenomenal to know that strangers you know some of you are strangers some of you don't know me and you still share this message it's phenomenal that you believe um in, in, in what God is saying and you're sharing it with people right because you just never know who needed to hear this who needed to know that you know what this thing is bigger than me you that that God is a God of expectations you somebody needed to know that it's big I mean that um it's not about um the offense that I need to let that go you know it's like and share I love you guys I love you God loves you more <laughs> And thank you, Walter. Uh, thank you for loving me back. Um, and there's nothing you could do about it. It's nothing we could do about it. Because somebody wants to love on you, it's nothing you could do about it. Just accept it and move on. Enjoy the rest of your day. Accept that love. So you guys have a wonderful and blessed, faithful Friday. Um, take time to think about who you are, who you're holding on as an offense, who, who you're allowing to offend you. Take time to think about that, right? And then let it go. 
Let it go. Give it to God. Let it go. You know, stop holding on to that. Right? They don't owe you anything. Once you get that into your spirit, once you recognize that they don't owe you anything, you you become free. You become free. Right? You become free. So, um, guess what? I want you guys to be safe. It's Friday. Please be safe. Please, please be safe. Because um, this world is much different <laughs> than it used to be. So, I need you to be safe. Think things through. Um, again, pray. If you're going somewhere this weekend, pray before you go there. Ask God, is this where I should be? You know, is this where I need to be? Is this who, the people that you want me around? God talks. He, we serve a living God. <laughs> he, we serve a living God. So if you live it, you talk it, right? Whether it's through um, your mouth, through your body language, whatever it is you're communicating, and God is communicating. He is today the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's the God that we serve. So I love y'all. Have a great weekend of God willing. I'll talk to you guys on Monday. Bye.